Welcome. On this video, we will discuss similarity in right triangles. Okay, so first, let's start with some vocabulary words here. Um, <clears throat> let me just get my tools here. Okay, so we're ready. Uh, since we're going to be discussing the geometric mean, first we have to define what a geometric mean is. Well, the geometric means comes from a proportion. So here we have two fractions or just two ratios, which are equal to each other. Uh, but instead of ratios equal to each other, we can say that the denominator of one and the numerator of the other, uh, they can be called the means of those proportions. But whenever they are equal to each other, whenever they happen to have the same variable or the same value, which in this case, if we let x equals to be y, in other words, if they happen to have the same variable or the same value in it, we call x to be the geometric mean. So whenever you have proportions equals to each other and the denominator is and the denominator of one proportion is equals to the numerator of the other proportion, then we can just call that variable to be the geometric mean among those two proportions. And that's just vocabulary that we're going to be using throughout the lesson. Uh, but let's just practice. What do we mean by the geometric mean? Well, if we want to find the geometric mean between 5 and 11, well, first, we know there must be some proportions equal to each other. Uh, we don't know what the value the geometric mean is, but we definitely know where it should be located at. It should be the denominator of one and the numerator of the other. But now if we want to find the geometric mean between 5 and 11, then we just place them right here. Does it really matter where we placed it? We could have placed it 11 here and we could have placed a 5 here. It doesn't really matter. Because now if we solve for this, so what? now that we solve for this, uh, we can just cross multiply. And now this just becomes x times x is x squared. 5 and 11, that's 55. And if we take the square root, now x is equivalent to plus minus the square root of 55. All right. So at least this is just vocabulary. Let's just do another one uh, real quick here. And I guess for, for the equation, uh, one way of seeing it is that x can also be just being the square root of 5 times 11. Like it will get you the same idea there. Uh, let's just find the geometric mean. Uh, let's just do another example one. Let's call it A. Let's find the geometric mean. Between, I don't know, 10, 10 and 7. Again, I'm just going to set it up. Uh, I think you get the right idea here. Since we're talking about the geometric mean, we don't know what that is, but we definitely know where it is. It would just be the location. This is a correct setup for the geometric mean. And now if we want to find the geometric mean between 10 and 7, well, we place 10 here and we place 7 here. And at this point, we can just solve for it. So if we perform cross multiplication, that becomes x squared. Cross multiplication, that becomes 70. So x is the square root of 70. All right. So let's actually see how we can implement this using right triangles. So let's start by doing some small exploration and we'll see what we mean, what, 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 what observations can we gather from this? And then we'll use that in a couple of examples. Uh, so let's start by looking at this figure on the right hand side. Uh, let's identify what we wanna do in here. Well, let's perform the following. Let's identify and draw three separate, separately uh, triangles. And let's take a look at our observation. We notice that here I can identify three different triangles here. I can identify the big triangle, a triangle that is on the, the most outer triangle. I can identify this outer triangle. And that will be the triangle of A, B, C. We notice that this is a right triangle because it definitely has this right triangle here. We could also identify this other triangle here, A and C. So notice that here we have another triangle in the same figure. 
again, that's also another right triangle, but that now we're looking at this triangle right here. So that would be A and C. And there's also another triangle that we could have spotted here. Notice that we also have another triangle here, which we can call triangle N, N, B, C. And notice that this is also a right triangle. Okay, so we have properly identified the triangles in this figure. Notice that there were just three big triangles which were overlapping. Now, is there any relationship that we can find among these three triangles? Well, the first relationship that you might see is that the big triangle, the small triangle on the left, and the small triangle on the right, they're all right triangles. So that's a huge relationship that, that we do have here. So we have that all triangles are right triangles. But now let's stop here for a second, because if they're all right triangles, if the only distinction between all of them is perhaps the size, then we can call them similar triangles. But if they're similar triangles, therefore we can identify corresponding sides. So let's identify those corresponding sides. Let's see, what sides can we categorize as corresponding? Well, let's start by identifying the sides that are opposite to the hypotenuse, which in this case, that would be AB, that would be AC, and that would be CV. So notice that those three sides are all corresponding since they are the side that are opposite of the hypotenuse. So let's just keep this down. Uh, what are the corresponding sides? Well, we have AB is corresponding to AC, which is also corresponding to CV. Now, the other correspondents uh, are not that easy to identify. Let me just change the color here. But we can have a, a bigger conversation later on, uh, later on in class. But here, CV will also be corresponding uh, to CN, which is also corresponding to NB. So let's just write that down. So here we have three corresponding sides. Uh, we also know that CV is corresponding to CN which is corresponding to MB. Um, let me just make this a little more clear. So now that this corresponding sides are for the yellow ones, and now that this corresponding parts are for the green ones. And I guess by order of elimination, we can say, um, let's use blue. We can say that AC is also corresponding to AN, which is also corresponding to CN. Okay. So let me just write this down. So we got that AC is corresponding to AN, which is also corresponding to CN. And let me just put this in here so we know where they come from. So the idea here is that we have three right triangles. They're all right triangles, therefore they're similar. And if they are similar, then they for they must have corresponding sides. And this is what we have done so far. So now that we have all this new information can we use the figures on the top right hand and the observation that we have to write down equation to state that CN is the geometric mean? So what do we mean by this? What we're trying to say here is the following. Can we write down some kind of a proportion where we can make CN a geometric mean? Well, if we want CN to be a geometric mean, uh, therefore, we need to just place it on the bottom bottom left, according to how we have defined the geometric mean. So notice that if we set it up in this way, uh, if we set it up this way, we, we, we are definitely signaling that we're going to make CN our geometric mean. But now, where can we get the other, the value or the, or the side that we do have in this platform and the side that we do have on this platform? But notice one thing. If we make 
we know that these three triangles are all similar triangles. So how about we just choose two? I'm just going to take a look at my my second triangle. Uh, notice the triangle A and C is similar to triangle. Uh, let me make sure I use the right. So A, A and C to C and B. And if that's the case, then we can definitely use similar uh, the proportion that we do have for similar triangles. And if we, if we set this up correctly, you will see that if we make AB, so notice that AB, uh, where is that at? I'm sorry, my mistake. That will be AN. Um, None of AN is proportional to CN. So therefore, we can have this proportional ratio. And also, notice that CN is proportional to NB. And what do we have here? We know that this statement is true. We know that this equation is true due to similarities. Notice that AN is proportional to CN. So that's what we do have our first setup here. And that should be equivalent to CN being proportional to NB. So they're true, but notice where we have placed CN properly. And notice that this equation right here is exactly what we're looking for, because now we're making CN to be a geometric mean. So for any right triangle, this equation will always be true. So make sure that you do have this equation somewhere in your notebook. But it's not the only equation that we can uh, create uh, using the ideas that we do have here on the upper section. Because now, because now if, if we take a look at the first and the second triangle, we know that they're similar too. So let me write this down. I also know that on my first triangle, uh, which is ABC, That triangle is definitely similar to the second triangle. Um, so ABC, so we're going to call that ACN. And if they're similar to each other, then definitely we can set up our ratios. Now let's choose some corresponding sides. Well, I can see, I can see that if these two sides are, uh, I'm sorry, if I'm, if I'm going to be comparing the first and the second triangle, then definitely AB is proportional to AC. Where's the corresponding sides? I'm sorry. AB, it's a corresponding side to AC. So let me just set this up. So AB, it's a corresponding side to AC, which at the same time, AC is corresponding to AN. And take a look at how we have set up this. Because now we have set up a proportion where we have made AC to the B the geometric mean. So notice that now we have two equations here, which we can use to define geometric mean among sides in right triangles. Now we can definitely use a uh, we can definitely use the same technique to if we compare the first and the third triangle. Uh, let me just make some space here. Now notice that we also know that the first triangle, which we're going to call ABC. It's definitely similar to my third triangle. Um, let me make sure I use the same order. So BCN. And if those two triangles are similar, then therefore I can set up a proportion that is equal to each other. So now let's use some the the, the correct um, the corresponding side, so we can make AC a geometric mean. 
we notice that, well, let me take a look at my figure. If we notice that AB, AB is corresponding to CB. So let me just write that down. So AB is corresponding to CB. But at the same time, BC is corresponding to BN. BC is corresponding to BN, so we can write that down, CB to MBN. And I just noticed a small typo here. This is definitely, we don't want to state that AC to be the geometric mean. Here we're talking about BC, so we can change this real quick. Uh, notice that we have properly set this up. And all we have said here is that we have created an equation where we have made CV to be a geometric mean. So all we have done here is we have created three using similar triangles. Well, what we started is saying, look, man, we have a triangle, which is three right triangles are overlapping with each other. If I separate them, they're all similar triangles. And if they're all similar triangles, then they must have corresponding sides. Now that I have identified the corresponding sides, I can set up the correct proportion to make either CN, AC, or BC to be the geometric mean. And just to see what we have done here, uh, what this proportion is telling you is, if we, if we take a look at the big picture here, let me see if I can just bring this down. Oh, yes, we can. Uh, the first, uh, what we have obtained in task number two, what we have said in CN, which is exactly kind of like the, high, uh, the vertical line, so we can see that as the height of the triangle in some sense. Uh, the height of the triangle can be a proportion. I'm sorry, the height of the triangle can be a geometric mean, where if we measure AN, AN over NC, that's equivalent to CN over MB. So the first uh, proportion, the one way to memorize it, it looks kind of like a T. So AN divided by NC, is equivalent to NC divided by NB, which is what we do have here. If we bring this down, the equation that we obtained in, in example two is one way of seeing that AC is a geometric mean, where AC can be seen as just the left-hand side of the triangle. So what we have said is that the whole base of the triangle, so AB over AC, it's equivalent to AC over AN. So another way of seeing it is that the whole over the side is equal to the side over the small. So AB over AC, which is what we do have here, it's equivalent to AC over AN. So the whole over the side is equal to the side over the small. What our last equation is saying here is that if we compare AB with the other side, so AB over CN, so AB over CN is the side over the small. So AB over CV is equal to CV over BN. So the whole over the side is equal to the side over the small. In order that uh, the equation that we got on task number three and the equation that we got on task number four is essentially the same, which is referring to the different side of the triangle. So all this is pretty nice information to get, but how do we actually use it? Well, we can definitely use it. Let's just do one example so you can see the implementation of it. Uh, let's take a look at our diagram. And here we want to use this diagram. Let me just make it a little bit smaller. We want to use this diagram to find the values for H, A, and B. Okay. So one thing that we notice is that H, well, let's start with H. So let's start with H. So that's the height of the triangle. Uh, and we already showed previously on our first example, or at least on the first proportion, that this can be seen as a geometric mean among the side, uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So using the equation that we got in task number two, we can set this up properly. 
So now we can say, let me make sure I get here. I can say that three over H is equivalent to H over seven, which is the side over the height is equal to the height over the side, which is what we got on the example in the first task. And in this case, to properly find the value of H, we can just cross multiply. So now this becomes H squared over 21. And if we want to solve for H, now this becomes H equals plus or minus square root of 21. But notice that H represents a height, so therefore H can never be negative. So we can just say H is equal to the square root of 21. All right. Now, let's try to find the value for A. So this is what we got for H. Now let's try to find the value of A. We notice that here we have that the side is also a geometric mean, but now the side is a geometric mean, but now the side is a geometric mean among what? The side is a geometric mean between the whole and the small on the left one, because notice that A is part of this triangle. So I'm gonna be making a hole between 10. So from here to here, that's 10. So A is a geometric mean between 10 and three in this case, because notice that three, it's on the same triangle that A is part of, which is the triangle that we do have on the left hand side. And we set this up correctly. So now it becomes 30 equals A squared. So A is the square root of 30. Because that all, oh, notice that the height, it's a geometric mean. It's a geometric mean between the sides on the bottom. The left hand side is a geometric mean, a geometric mean between the whole and the small on the left hand side. And to find B, we know that the side of this triangle is also geometric mean. But it's a geometric mean between what? Well, it's a geometric mean between the whole, which is still 10, over the side where B is located. At. B is located on the right triangle, so therefore, the side will be corresponding to seven. So now we cross multiply, we're gonna get B squared is equal to 70, where B is the square root of 70. So I know that the beginning, uh, it might have not come too straightforward as to how we're obtaining those proportions or those equations that we set up on the tasks. Uh, but what's important is for you to just kind of understand where they come from, but more importantly, how to use them. And the way to use them is just to understand that the height, it's a geometric mean between the sides, so three over seven. So that's how we set up this one. The side of the right, the side on the left-hand side, it's a geometric mean between the whole, which is 10, over the side, which corresponds to A, which is three. That's how we set this up. And for B, the side, on this right triangle, it's a geometric mean between the whole, which is still 10, over the side that corresponds to B, which is seven.